All right, everyone, this is this is Adam Green here from ATA Engineering. I think we'll kick off. Um, people are still coming in, but it's just after two, so we'll, we'll start. Um, welcome to this webinar. I'm hosted by ATA and helped by Siemens. Um, and appreciate everyone coming from all, all corners of the, the globe, probably at different time zones, so we appreciate you joining us. Um, so my name is Adam Green. I'm a business development manager with ATA. Um, and I will talk about ATA in a few moments, um, very briefly, and then pass the ball over to David Russ. David, do you want to say hello from where you are? Hello from Detroit. This is David. Thanks for joining us today, David. That's awesome. And so, um, and David today is going to talk about um, basically hybrid multi-phase modeling. I'm not going to read all of those out to you because he's going to cover those in more detail. Um, but just quickly, let's talk a little bit about um, ATA and, and why we're here today. Um, so ATA are an engineering company in, in the USA and based in San Diego and other cities in the US. And we really focus on um, engineering services, primarily for aerospace and defense um, and a few other industries you can see there. Um, but we're engineering consultants. We do a lot of um, testing and ground testing as well as engineering design. Um, and so we're a full service um, engineering company. And we are also um, a Siemens Platinum partner selling basically um, Siemens tools, nearly all of the Sim Center portfolio um, together with other um, Siemens tools. And so we have a full consulting group that specializes, especially in Star CCM Plus modeling, um, but also in, in various other aspects of, of simulation. Um, we're, we're employee owned, so everyone has a vested interest in the company and it works very well as a, a close knit group. And we're also very skilled and, and, and highly experienced. Um, 28 PhDs, 70 masters, um, and as you can see, we all have a lot of experience in, in our relative sectors. So, um, one of the things that a lot of people probably online have never really heard of ATA and, and where we came from, and so this slide just highlights the, the idea that we've been around a long time um, and, and used to be a, a division within SDRC, and for those who know SDRC, was the, the group that created ideas originally, and then that became Unigraphics, which eventually became NX. And so we're pretty tied into the history of, of NX and hence Siemens as well as, as the owners of NX now. Um, and in 2000, ATA became its own company being floated out of SDRC when SDRC was bought by another group. Um, and you can see there how we've grown over the, over the last nearly 20 years now to, to be the group we are today. So um, we're, we're pretty happy to be talking to you today about Star CCM Plus. Um, and me personally, I've been with um, 18, 18 months now, but I've also was, was, was with CCM for six years prior to that. So I'm very experienced with, with Star CCM Plus. Um, and really just showing you this slide to highlight what we already know on this line, those who are, who are users, how, how flexible and, and complete Star CCM Plus is a simulation tool. Um, but when we get to some multi-phase aspects of some of this, those became become kind of the extreme end of the modeling um, and, and complex issues as well as challenges come into play. And, and David today is hopefully going to walk us through lo lots of examples of, of the different applications of multi-phase modeling within Star CCM Plus. So, so with that, David, I'm going to go from our introduction. Thank you, everyone to David's agenda of, of basically all the features of, of Star CCM Plus multi-phase, and over to you. Thank you, Adam. Let me go ahead and I'm share my stop, screen. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing so you can. Let me know when you guys can see me or see my screen, I should yeah, say. Look, looks good. Perfect. Okay, thanks, Adam. Um, so for the next 45 minutes or so, uh, my intent is to talk about the topic of hybrid multi-phase modeling. Um, as part of that, I'm going to overview the multi-phase models that are present in Star CCM Plus, and then talk through some applications about how they can be combined together to better match the physics of the real world. So when we think about hybrid multi-phase or even multi-phase modeling in general, um, I'm sure different things come up in different people's minds because um, really most every uh, real world engineering application involves multiple different types of physics and frequently these are different types of phases, um, whether it be uh, spray painting and after treatment um, in the automotive industry, we have uh, aircraft icing in the aerospace industry, um, uh, we have uh, washing laundry in consumer in white goods. Um, there's many different ways that these concepts can be applied. 
um, and be thinking as I'm going through this about how these ideas can be applied in your industry. But before I get uh, it deeply into the individual models, um, I want to start with a case study. Um, this is a, a case study to highlight how these models can be used in a powerful way. Here we're looking at a water tower, a water cooling tower, and we're talking about maximizing the water recovery for a more efficient operating cooling tower. And so um, what we want to do here is to uh, do an intelligent design exploration study to help us design a better cooling tower. And so we're going to vary things uh, related to the geometry, like the, um, the radius of the inlet and the gap at the base of the tower. And we've got constraints based on flow rates and the total tower height. Now, to do this correctly involves a hybrid multi-phase approach. Um, because in order to do a cooling tower correctly, there's a lot of different flow regimes involved. Um, and so we're going to be using a, a VOF vapor phase to uh, simulate the, uh, the steam in the air um, as they're floating upwards. We're going to be using a VOF water phase for the, the liquid pool of water at the bottom. There's a film phase that's running down the side of a tower under the influence of gravity. Um, and as that film gets to the, uh, the bottom lip of the tower, it's going to strip into Lagrangian droplets, which then impinge into the VOF phase, connecting us into a full circle. Now, using the hybrid multi-phase capabilities in SAR CCM Plus and combining them with our um, hybrid and adaptive intelligent search algorithm, we were able to find that the uh, water recovery for this cooling tower was best with an inlet with a radius in the range of 9 to 10 meters. At larger radius, um, the recovered water tended to hit the inlet rather than the pool, which means it wasn't behaving correctly. And so by using hybrid multi-phase, we were able to get a simulation that uh, runs in a reasonable enough time that we can then start running a series of simulations um, using our, our guided intelligent search algorithm to drive towards a better design faster. When, when we think about star C plus in general and kind of what, what is involved to make this sort of thing successful, um, there's a few key components that I want to highlight. First is the idea of parametric modeling. Um, parametric modeling um, can be focused on CAD or it can be focused on uh, boundary conditions, material properties, operating parameters. But the idea is being able to make quick changes to your model um, and, and having those, those changes uh, cascade down to the rest of the simulation. And involved in this is the ability to do uh, bi-directional connectivity with many different CAD and PLM tools so that you can make a change to a geometry in SAR CCM Plus, then you can push that geometry into another tool like NX. Next is the idea of flexible and robust meshing. Um, our meshing process is uh, fully automated. You build a, a meshing pipeline, and then as you make those parametric changes, those changes cascade through your mesh to build a new mesh that is high quality and is, is equivalent to the previous mesh for the previous geometry, allowing you to make fair comparisons between the two. The third is the idea of multi-physics, and this is the one that we're going to be talking about mostly today. Um, but multi-physics uh, includes our multi-phase and our hybrid multi-phase models, um, as well as, as other more advanced physics that can be brought in uh, to take our physics to the next level. Next is the idea of speed and performance. Um, we, we want a tool that is going to enable our customers to uh, get to the results as quickly as possible because value isn't really generated in running simulation. Value is generated in having data and analyzing the data. And so we'll, um, we built our solver to be uh, excellently scalable. We've benchmarked it up to tens of thousands of cores and seen excellent scalability at very high numbers. Um, again, the idea of data analysis. Uh, in Star CCM Plus, we have top of the line um, data analysis capabilities or post processing capabilities um, that integrate in with all aspects of your solution. And this allows you to understand complex interdependencies with your data um, to help pick out those relationships that are, may not be obvious but are important for your conclusions. All of this leads into workflow automation, the idea of being able to get from CAD to mesh to solution to your analysis um, with, uh, within the same tool um, and repeatable with just a minimal number of clicks. So if you make a change to CAD, those changes propagate through your mesh, through your solution and into your data analysis, and you can pick it back up at the end when it's completed without needing to hold its hand as it goes through this process. And then lastly, all these ideas build into the concept of design exploration. Um, and this is where we can take out an automated workflow that involves 
any of the relevant multi-physics that are necessary for your simulation, and then apply the HEADS technology to this to run through this loop in an intelligent and automatic fashion, driving towards a better design while satisfying uh, the constraints that you may have set, and doing so faster um, than what you may have seen previously. But as I mentioned, um, today we are going to be talking uh, in the most detail in, about to the multi-physics aspects and how they impact our speed and performance. In SAR CCM Plus, we have a comprehensive suite of multi-physics models, um, and we're going to talk through each one of these in detail. And we'll also talk about how these models um, interact together in a hybrid manner. So, uh, when we speak of a comprehensive suite of multi-phase models, um, what we're speaking of uh, are multi-phase models that can cover all the different flow regimes that you may see in your engineering applications. Um, we have a wide range of models that can look at things like dispersed phases, stratified phases, uh, well-mixed, separated, slug flows, discrete flows, etc. Um, each one of these uh, can be modeled well by a, a different model, um, but um, what we find is that a lot of times there are multiple flow regimes in a single environment, in a single simulation, and a multi-phase model may be well tuned towards resolving a single type of flow regime, but it may not be tuned to doing the others that are involved in the simulation. So a hybrid modeling strategy where you combine multiple multi-phase models together into a single simulation can allow you to apply the correct uh, model to match the correct flow regime. So for instance, for a rainwater management problem, we might use a Lagrangian multi-phase droplet phase to simulate uh, rain droplets impinging on a surface. And then we have a thin film that represents the, the flow across the surface. And as that accumulates, it turns into a VOF phase that allows us to bottle bulk fluids. Each one of these models um, is well tuned to its particular flow regime and they can work in concert together. The value of doing this is that we're able to minimize computational costs through effective use of models. If I wanted to model multiple flow regimes with a single model, in some cases this can be very computationally expensive or depending on what you're modeling, it may not be possible at all. But by combining the, the multiple models together in this hybrid strategy, we can get us towards the correct answer with a minimal computational cost. And built into this is the idea of uh, more complex mass transfer mechanisms between different phases so that the, fa the models aren't just existing together, but are actually actively talking to each other in a tightly coupled manner. So there are seven multi-phase models in Simpson or Star CCM Plus. Um, we have the O'Leary multi-phase, mixture multi-phase models, volume of fluid, dispersed multi-phase, um, the fluid film, Lagrangian multi-phase, and discrete element method. And these can be divided into uh, two major camps, um, the Eulerian family of models. Um, this is a, a traditional finite volume approach in, in which we are um, resolving everything as a continuum and um, any particles, bubbles, or droplets um, that are traveling through here are gonna be resolved on a continuum basis through this fixed finite volume. Conversely, we have a Lagrangian family of models, uh, which includes our traditional Lagrangian multiphase and our DEM phase. Um, and these models, rather than tracking um, the flow in and out of a finite volume, we are tracking the movement of discrete particles as they move through time and space. Our first major multiphase model is uh, the traditional true Euler-y multiphase model, or EMP as we'll sometimes describe it. Um, this is a, a model that allows us to model miscible fluids on length scales smaller than we wish to resolve. So think of bubbles, for instance. Very large bubbles, we may be able to, to resolve with uh, other models, but if we're talking with really fine bubbles, um, usually we don't want to mesh down to the point that we resolve uh, very small uh, micron size bubbles or even millimeter size bubbles. Um, and so the O'Leary multi-phase model allows us to calculate a flow field and a volume fraction for each phase and have these two phases interacting together um, via a, a coupled pressure, drag laws, etc. Um, this is the most complete multi-phase model as a result because we have transport equations for each phase. Um, and we can also do some of the most advanced physics with the O'Leary multi-phase model, such as things like crystal growth or phase changes. Um, and we also have population balance models that can allow us to uh, track size distributions for things like bubbles or droplets. So some use cases for this would be uh, bubbly flows, mixing tanks, um, and fluidized beds. 
Next is we have the mixture multiphase model. Um, again, we're assuming that our phases are miscible, like we are doing in the EMP approach. Um, but NMP is different from EMP in that it's lightweight. We're only solving a single set of transport equations. So there's a single velocity in each cell rather than a velocity for each phase. We're still gonna be solving the volume fraction of phases though. And we uh, have slipped between phases so that there can be um, some amount of separation that occurs. And then the, mo the relative motion between particles or between phases rather is uh, accounted via drag laws um, so that there is a, a momentum transfer between phases. There are some phase change models that can be included here, especially wall boiling. And we see this used quite a bit in things like boilers and steam generators. Thirdly is the volume of fluid model or the VOF model. This is especially targeted for immiscible fluids with sharp interfaces. There are a number of uh, specialized algorithms that are used to track the position and motion of that free surface. Um, and with that, we can include surface tension effects to, that affect the shape of the free surface. This model can do so, several different phase changes, including melting or solidification or uh, boiling and cavitation. And we have some specialized models for marine simulations, like you see on the, uh, the image on the top right. Um, this is used quite a bit in the marine industry, but it's also used um, in a lot of oil and gas applications um, or in, in some internal combustion engines as well. Next is the fluid film model. The fluid film model is a specialized model that allows us to resolve uh, flows in kind of a, a two and a half dimensional regime. We're uh, modeling the flow across a surface, but the thickness of that flow, rather than being resolved explicitly, is tracked as a scalar quantity as the fluid field thickness. This uh, allows us to significantly reduce meshing costs, for instance, to resolve these fluid films. Um, this model can capture rivulating behavior and surface tension effects, like we, you can see on the top right. Um, and there are some phase change models built in. This is used quite a bit in things like rainwater management, fuel sprays, or um, aircraft ice protection simulations. Next is the Lagrangian multiphase model, or the, the traditional LMP model. Um, and here we are uh, simulating the motion of discrete droplets, bubbles, or particles. Um, the, we can simulate um, a large number of droplets to be tracked by a single group of parcels so that we can have um, a reduced number of parcels that we need to, to calculate but still take into effect the, uh, the differences between the, the, the particle sizes. So we have lots of small bubbles or lots of small droplets resolved as a single larger parcel. An LMP model can be one-way or two-way coupled with the flow. So a one-way coupling would be a model in which um, the, the background flow field is impacting the Lagrangian phase, but it's not, the Lagrangian phase is not impacting the flow field. Or if we have a, uh, a higher volume fraction or higher energy associated with the Lagrangian phase, we can have two-way coupling where all of the uh, force and energy that's being transferred to the particles, there's an equal and opposite reaction um, on the background phase. An LMP model is suitable for low volume fraction um, flows in which particle-particle uh, collisions are not significant. Um, we have specialized models for things like uh, splashing and rebounding, um, atomization, evaporation, condensation, etc. And we see this used quite a bit, again, in uh, water management, in spray coatings, um, in erosion applications, um, and, and a number of others. Next is the dispersed multiphase model or the DMP model. Um, this is kind of an O'Larian approach to uh, the sorts of applications that we would use an LMP model. Um, but because it's O'Larian, we don't need to uh, focus on the motion of individual droplets, but rather we can just assume that it is a, um, a low volume fraction, uh, a continuous phase. And so things like rain or sand and trained in the air um, can oftentimes be well resolved with a dispersed multiphase model because we're not concerned about the behavior of an individual droplet, but it's uh, dilute enough that it's not impacting our background flow field. Um, and a DMP model will sit on top of uh, another model. So it might sit on top of a single phase model where we would do a single phase simulation and then we can add a DMP model's uh, a post-processing step. Or if we really want, in some cases, we may two-way couple that with the flow. We see this quite a bit in um, things like aircraft icing or sand ingestion simulations. 
Our last multi-phase model is the discrete element method. This is specifically uh, for uh, granular particulate flows. Um, and this allows us to, uh, to model bulk particle flow behavior um, in uh, such a way that the, uh, the interactions between particles are significant. And so um, with this, we can include effects like particles breaking and deforming, um, and we can uh, couple this to uh, a, a fluid simulation, a, a single phase or multi-phase, um, one or two ways within a single package. With most other CFD simulation tools, you may need to have a separate DEM code and then couple the two codes together. But in SAR CCM Plus, these are packaged together in the same tool. We see this quite a bit in things like fluidized beds, um, uh, aggregate flows with uh, agriculture or um, rock minerals. And we see this in pharmaceutical industries with things like tablet coating um, or things like lawn mowing. There's quite a bit of applications that we can use with DEM. But the key th theme here is that um, we have models that can capture every flow regime, um, but uh, real world flows involve multiple regimes. And so you wouldn't want to use a Lagrangian model, for instance, to cal calculate the, uh, the flow of a film on a surface. And likewise, you wouldn't want to use a fluid film phase to calculate droplet impingement. But by having these two models working in concert, we can more efficiently model complex applications. So if you think back to our cooling tower example, here we had three different multi-phase models working together in uh, a looped fashion. We have a VOF phase that goes upward uh, through our condensation phase interaction. We have a fluid film phase that's introduced and that flows downward. And then as that film assumption is no longer valid and we start having discrete droplets, we can convert that film into a Lagrangian phase, which then imp uh, impinges on and merges with a VOF phase again for the water. And so we have VOF to film to Lagrangian back to VOF. Um, by being able to um, uh, include all these together, we can simulate the more complex flow behavior. Um, so we're going to go through and highlight a, a few applications of hybrid multi-phase modeling in the subsequent slides. But in summary, um, we really want to, to highlight the compre com comprehensive suite of multi-phase models with all multiple multi-phase regimes for real-world problems. Um, and the value of this is that they are computationally efficient. So why so many models? Um, if we uh, build a multi-phase model, there are a number of assumptions that are built into that, and those assumptions are making it well-suited to a particular regime. If our, if our physics stays within that regime, then everything's great. But if we get outside that regime, then those assumptions start to break down. And so if you're well outside of the intended assumed regime, then the answers that you get, if you can get answers, aren't going to be meaningful. And so a multi-phase model has to be carefully chosen with the understanding of the assumptions and simplifications that go into building that model. So for instance, a volume of fluid phase um, is going to assume a, a free surface flow. It's going to artificially sharpen the boundary between those phases. In cases where we have a, uh, a very sharp distinction between phases, um, such as the flow around the marine vessel, it works very well. But if we wanted to look at bubbly droplets, um, we are going to need a, a, a large degree of resolution to make sure that we can keep that sharp interface. And if we don't have that resolution in our mesh, then we start getting a lot of errors introduced into the simulation. Um, so the idea of the assumptions behind our multi-phase models need to be appropriate to match our uh, appropriate flow regimes. So uh, some explanation of, of what some of these regimes would look like. A stratified flow would be something like a free surface, like a, a, a VOF phase or a fluid film phase. A dispersed phase would be where we don't want to fully resolve um, the the distinction between the phases. So things like droplets and bubbles, the EMP, MMP, and DMP phase are all well suited to this. A discrete phase is where we're going to be tracking the motion of individual uh, droplets, individual particles, or bubbles. Um, LMP and DEM are designed to do this natively. And with very fine mesh refinements, we can track uh, in VOF phase as well for uh, droplets and bubbles. Um, but again, there's a high mesh cost associated with that. And then for a dilute 
flow, um, we would be looking at something with a very low volume fraction. So something like a DMP, an LMP, or a fluid film would be well suited to that. So if we look at how we could do multi-regime flows uh, in a simulation framework, one option would be to use the highest fidelity model. And in many cases, this would be VOF. We could use a VOF model as a quasi-DNS multi-phase model to resolve every droplet, every bubble, every film. Um, this is doable, but it's typically not feasible, and it would be very computationally expensive in many applications. And if we don't, uh, if we don't put forward the necessary computational resources, then we're going to get a lot of inaccuracy due to under-resolution. A second option would be to use several models together to cover all flow regimes. Um, and so in the example here is that we could use VOF for the free surface flow, we could use fluid film for thin films, and we could use LMP for droplets, the rainwater example that I've previously described. Um, and here we need to have a software tool that allows us to have the appropriate models for the pr appropriate flow regime, and then allow the mass energy and momentum transfer between the phases so that they're tightly coupled. And then the third option would be to expand the applicability of a single standard model, such as EMP, to cover multiple flow regimes. All of these are possible in SAR CCM Plus. Um, I'm not going to be talking much about this first option, but I will be talking more about two and three. So uh, two, where we have multiple flow regimes working together. An example of that would be in aircraft icing. Um, here we are looking at a, um, we're looking at Lagrangian droplets that are impinging on this, this wing. And um, it's important that we use Lagrangian because the way in which they impact will determine what sort of ice is formed. And so we can have the Lagrangian droplets impact correctly on the wing, and then they can be converted to a film which then freezes. Um, and for an application like this, certain types of, of ice are going to significantly change the shape of the airfoil. And so we could uh, actually morph the mesh to match the change in the geometry that's caused by this freezing effect. Um, and here you can see some comparison with experimental data where we're able to capture um, this uh, airfoil deformation and its resulting impact on things like lift and drag. Um, Similarly to the LMP film example we just saw, this is a DMP film example, um, where we may not be as concerned about the impact of specific droplets. We don't want the stochastic behavior that is associated with discrete simulations. Um, instead, we would use a DMP phase, which is a lightweight Eulerian model. And here we would uh, es essentially model um, a, a mist in the air that is going to be impacted by this nacelle. And as the uh, DMP impinges on, uh, on the nacelle, we can convert it into a film and measure the collection efficiency of, of droplets on this, uh, on this nacelle. Um, and, and further, we could uh, include icing in here with the phase change. A third example is the idea of vehicle water management. And I've, I've hinted at this previously, but um, when we're looking at uh, vehicle management, it's important to consider that as you're driving along in a rainstorm, you need to be able to see. Someone has to engineer the wiper blades and the windshield to work together in an appropriate way to make sure that the water is cleaner, clear enough for you to be able to see. And so uh, further, this is going to be interacting with the aerodynamics. And so in this simulation, we have a fluid film um, in these animations that we can see in dark blue. But as the film gets thick enough, that fluid film assumption breaks down. It's no longer of a, uh, an infinitesimal thickness. It's thick enough that it's starting to impact the, the aerodynamics and the flow field around it. And so the film gets converted into a VOF phase, which you see with the lighter cyan color. Um, and surface tension forces are going to be uh, passed between both of these models to make sure that we're getting consistent behavior as we're transitioning from film to VOF. Um, in the, the, thicker, uh, the thicker areas of the flow, um, are, the flow features are only going to be captured by, by VOF, um, but with the thinner regions, um, if we tried to resolve this with VOF, it would be very computationally expensive. So the hybrid approach is allowing us to do this in a cost-effective way. Next example is a gearbox. And here we're initially looking at this as a DMP uh, 
flow that is coming into the gear. Uh, this geometry has been a bit simplified for demonstration purposes, but we have a DMP phase um, that is impacting onto the gear. So there's oil spraying onto the gear, but we're not resolving the spray droplet by droplet. Um, in, when it impinges, um, we're able to see uh, initially a film form, and as the film thickens, it's able to convert into a, um, a VOF phase. So we have DMP, we have film, and we have VOF uh, combined together. Um, and as it drips down, we can see that there's uh, a pool of VOF that forms at the bottom. Another approach to the same sort of problem, this is an example of where um, we might use a, a different set of multi-phase models depending on what we want to capture. In this case, we're uh, resolving the jet with a higher resolution VOF phase. Um, and here, this is gonna require significantly more computational costs than the previous example, but we also have much more detail about what's occurring and we can have much greater confidence in the, low, the detail and accuracy of answers that we're getting from the simulation. Here we have a VOF phase that impinges and uh, becomes a film phase. Um, if we wanted to simplify this somewhat, we could have the VOF phase turn directly into a Lagrangian phase. Um, so that's a, a third way we can connect, connect these models together. But um, it's important to think about the simulation that you want to run and the assumptions that go into each multi-phase model so that you can choose the right assumptions to match what your ultimate engineering goals are. Um, higher, high fidelity and low fidelity simulations sometimes call for different approaches. This next section is showing how we can do uh, hybrid multi-phase modeling uh, within a single multi-phase model. Um, we'll be seeing how we can use a single model to do multiple flow regimes. Um, and here we are introducing the EMP multiple flow regime model. Um, so this is a uh, advancement to a traditional EMP framework that allows us to take the benefits of a VOF phase and combine them with the benefits of a traditional EMP phase. Um, this allows us to uh, get aspects of both in a much more computationally affordable approach. So in a spillway like we see here, um, we are going to be having uh, a lot of bubbles and droplets that are, are forming at the bottom uh, where this hydraulic jump is occur occurring. We can see um, that the uh, the volume fractions of water in the, the bottom of that spillway range from about 0.3 up to one, which means we have, we have bulk water, we have bulk air, but we also have a, a bubbly, frothy mixture of the two. And to do this sort of approach with VOF is not going to be acceptable. We're going to need an extremely high mesh resolution to model every droplet, every bubble in there, and that's usually impractical. Um, however, a traditional EMP approach does not resolve the free surface. Um, at the top of the spillway and to some extent at the bottom, we have uh, macroscopic interfaces between large bulks of each uh, of these uh, phases. And so if we were to use a traditional EMP or traditional VOF, we're not going to be able to capture all aspects of this problem. Um, by being able to do this in a single multi-phase model, what we're going to be able to see is how we can capture the free surface flows as well as the dispersed flows. So if we think about what's occurring as the, the water is hitting the bottom of the spillway, um, we have phase A, that's our air. We have phase B, that is our water. Um, and as the water comes down from the left, you're going to be having um, uh, we're going to be having water dispersed in the air. So we have droplets flying up from our, um, flying up from our bulk water. We're also going to have bubbles uh, dispersed in uh, phase B, which is uh, the water. So there's going to be bubbly flow at the bottom. And there's also gonna be this really frothy mixed regime that's not quite bubbles, it's not quite droplets, but it's very much a mix of both. And it's a very complicated chaotic process. As it flows down though, um, these two phases segregate and we start to get a large scale interface that develops. This entire picture is what the EMP multiple flow regime model is trying to uh, resolve. So um, here is an example um, in which we have um, simulated uh, uh, using our EMP multiple flow regime model, we've, we've done a um, gas liquid counter current flow. 
Um, and here we have on the right hand and on the left hand, we have two large pools of liquid. Um, and then we have uh, gas up above. And then there is this kind of oscillating um, waveform that goes back and forth. What our multiple flow regime model is doing is that it is um, capturing that large scale interface, um, similar to how VOF would capture it in areas in which it's appropriate, where there's significant mesh resolution for it and it detects from the flow field that a, sh a sharp interface should exist. The LSI aspect of the multiple flow regime model will identify that and try to resolve it. However, um, where there's no one phase dominating over another, when we have that, that frothy zone, we're able to use different drag laws to account for the interaction between these two phases in this um, mixed zone. And so, um, and then in cases where we have bubbles or droplets that are too small to resolve, but are uh, enough that they're significant, we see that they're um, treated as a dispersed phase in a continuous phase, which is kind of how a traditional EMP approach would work. Um, this simulation could be taken to an additional level with uh, some more multi-physics if we were to include things like bulk boiling and condensation or surface tension. Um, that's an example of how we can combine multi-phases and multi-physics together to uh, take our simulation to a higher fidelity and closer to matching a true digital twin of our process. Now, as a benchmark between the EMP uh, multiple flow regime approach with its LSI capability versus a traditional VOF approach, um, this same simulation was run in both models. With the traditional VOF approach, we ran this uh, to get this in 2D. It required 1.6 million cells. Um, for uh, a 3D flow, 1.6 isn't a very large number, but for a 2D flow, that's quite a, quite a large number of cells. Um, but with the EMP LSI uh, multiple flow regime approach, we're able to resolve this in 45,000 cells. That's a 35x uh, reduction in our, our cell count to effectively get the same answer. We're able to do this because in areas where we need to resolve uh, the interface, we're able to apply cells there to get that sharp interface. But in areas where we're not as concerned about the resolution between these two phases, such as the bubbly frothy areas, we can use a much coarser grid and still, uh, still get the stability um, and accuracy that we would want um, by combining the best of both models. So in summary, um, real world multi-phase problems are often multiple flow regimes. There may be stratified, dispersed, uh, discrete films involved. Um, a single multi-phase model frequently does not capture um, everything that's going on in our real world engineering applications. However, a traditional multi-phase model is going to assume a single flow regime. The, the assumptions that are built into the model are designed to make it efficient and accurate in that flow regime. Um, but when we violate our assumptions, we get inaccuracies, we can sometimes get instabilities or computational costs. They don't work well outside of what they're intended to work for. Um, with SimCenter Center Star CCM Plus, we can uh, provide hybrid multi-phase modeling techniques for these multiple flow regime flows. Um, many of our multi-phase models work together through phase interactions to achieve um, a tight coupling between these phases so that we can use the appropriate model to match the appropriate flow regime. And in some cases, we can also use a single model, the uh, EMP LSI model or the multiple, EMP multiple flow regime model to capture multiple flow regimes using a single model. And one thing I want to highlight is that these methods are being continuously developed. We are uh, continuously striving to make the code better and better. Um, and with SimCenter Star CCM Plus, we put out a new full feature release um, three times a year. Um, and so uh, capabilities that may not be in the code now, um, we, we have ways for our customers to, um, to voice their interest in making the code better. And our product management and development teams take this very seriously to um, add uh, 50 to 100 new features with every release, many of which are driven by customer requests. Um, and lastly, I want to highlight uh, just more uh, broadly speaking, the compatibility between our phases. So in this chart, um, red means that these models are not compatible with each other. And in many cases, for obvious reasons, um, a mixture multi-phase and a VOF, uh, for instance, are red when combined together, largely because they're very similar models, but VOF is assuming a sharp interface, whereas the MMP is not. And so there's no value add by combining these together. 
Green are cases where we have uh, strong coupling between these phases through a phase interaction model. So for instance, between VOF and fluid film, we can do a resolve fluid film where it becomes thick enough and we convert it to a VOF phase to track it in three dimensions. In yellow, um, these are cases where we can use these models together in a simulation, but there may not be a phase interaction between the two. So these are cases where um, there is uh, the ability to combine their effects for their separate flow regimes, but there's not going to be tight coupling together. And so um, this allows us to uh, further expand our capabilities um, in situations where we may not need a tight coupling, but still have multiple flow regimes present. So with that, I wanna thank you for your time and open the floor to any questions and uh, stop on this one last animation that highlights uh, very beautifully um, uh, the value of hybrid multi-phase modeling. In this champagne glass, we have, uh, we have bubbles that are bubbling up um, from the dissolved carbon dioxide in the, the wine. And as those bubbles reach the surface, they are converted into the, to the gas of off-phase. But we also have uh, more champagne being poured into the glass. And as we do so, it is entraining uh, larger air bubbles uh, into, the, uh, into the glass. And we can see those as kind of those blobs that are, are flowing um, and ultimately breaking apart, uh, mixing with the, with the air and uh, dispersing, or else becoming smaller and smaller and being converted into a Lagrangian phase. So here we have uh, Lagrangian and Voff working together to give us a very picturesque scene. So does anyone have any questions? Awesome, thank you, David. So at this time, everyone, I've uh, changed the meeting settings. So you're now able to unmute yourself if you'd like to ask a question. Um, you can do that if you're in the Zoom application, it's not in the screen share window, it's back on the main meeting. In the bottom left-hand corner, there's a mute or unmute button. So you can unmute yourself and ask a question. You can also certainly ask a question uh, through the chat and, and we're happy to take questions that way as well. Uh, hello, I have a, a quick, my name is Sam G. I'm, uh, I'm from Novares and I have a quick question regarding this uh, beautiful glass of wine. Uh, have you ever thought about to apply with a uh, EMP with the Lagrangian multi-phase flow for this simulation rather than using only both uh, with the Lagrangian? So um, firstly, full disclosure, I did not build this animation, but uh, one of my colleagues in Europe uh, built it a few weeks prior. But um, if we were to do this with EMP rather than VOF, um, we would, uh, Surely, surely be able to get a, a lower cell count um, uh, inside the, the bulk of the glass because we wouldn't need to resolve all of these bubbles. Um, however, in this case, um, especially for visualization purposes where we want to see all of those bubbles, a VOF model is going to do that very well um, to, uh, to capture all those behaviors. If we were to use an EMP LSI uh, approach, um, we could probably get fairly comparable results, um, but we're not going to be getting the benefits that we would normally get from EMP LSI because there's really no portion of the flow regime where we don't want to resolve those bubbles. We want the, to have that high fidelity resolution throughout. So while we could get very similar engineering answers, um, it wouldn't be, uh, uh, there, we wouldn't get a whole lot of additional value by using that approach. Yeah, the, the, the reason why I'm asking is uh, the EMP LSI is typically, is just a very you know, dilute system with a continuous phase. So it does not pick it up so detail, a uh, small air bubble, which is less than one micro, such a, like, uh, such a case. So uh, Lagrangian phase for, for, for simulation bubble or simulation of the bubble is much more effective. That's why the combination with the uh, EMP with the might be it because because we don't need to have a, such a fine mesh to uh, to pick it up small uh, small fine bubble like a, less than one micro. Uh, that's why to compensate with the LSI, the EMP LSI, with the uh, maybe using a coarse mesh, uh, maybe both is too much costly to have a, such a fine mesh for, to catch one uh, one micro. Or size of the you know that mesh is a, it, it takes even though the cup is small, uh, it takes so long time to calculate. 
That's why I just asking. Yeah, that's an important point. In this case, we we're, we would be looking at four different uh, orders of magnitude of length scales. If we consider, you know, the the size of the glass and the sm size of the very smallest bubble, to resolve all of those together may be uh, very computationally expensive. But by taking a hybrid approach with multiple flow models, we can apply the right model for the right flow regime. Hey, David, thank you for that. There's more questions on the chat. Do you want me to read them to you or can you see them? Um, I can't see them unless I stop sharing my screen. So why don't you go ahead uh, right. and read well, them then, to me? So, uh, I'll read them. So the first one is from um, Ray Alston. We don't know where he is, but he, he has said that um, has the LSI model been further benchmarked for emulsion in recent years using test data? Um, I'll need to get back to you about specific uh, benchmarks against test data, but I do know that we have been um, uh, developing our emulsion rheology capabilities quite a bit in SAR CCM Plus. Um, so if that's something you haven't looked at recently, um, we'd be happy to, uh, uh, to have a conversation to dive a bit deeper into that with you. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Ralston. Um, um, D Zhang has asked, can this hybrid multi-phase models work with FSI? Can it work with FSI? Um, in general, I would say yes. Um, a, a number of these examples I know uh, can be uh, combined with that, but um, I don't want to say blanket that it will work with every single one. It, uh, the devil is in the detail some, sometimes, and I don't want to overpromise. But um, I know many of these models are quite compatible with FSI. Um, again, if you have a specific use case in mind, we could take that conversation offline. Okay, thank you for that. Another question for um, Vandad Talimi is, um, when, when coupling VOF with other models, is it possible to dynamically refine or coarsen the mesh where required? So um, that's an excellent question and uh, depends on, on when I answer the question. If I answer it today, um, uh, the answer is, is no, we don't have automatic mesh refinement. But fortunately, um, in the uh, 2020.1 release that's coming out uh, in February of this next year. Uh, so very soon, we are introducing a, a brand new automated mesh refinement technique with a built-in uh, compatibility with VOF um, that will give you much more uh, mesh control over uh, doing that sort of refinement to get the level of refinement in areas that, where you need it um, and to allow you to keep it coarse in areas where you don't need it. Excellent. Okay, so it's coming in 2020.1. Yes. All right. So Kevin Farrell has asked, do you think at some point you can model total in-tube vaporization or condensation and all the intermediate flow regimes? I'm not familiar enough with that application to, to speak in a lot of detail to it, but um, evaporation and condensation are built into uh, to many of these models and many of the phase interactions between them. Um, and that can allow us to capture a, a wide variety of, of, of length and phase scales. Um, so um, I would tentatively say, say yes, that's, that's something that we can probably do. But um, if, if you want to talk in detail about how we could do it and how difficult it would be, again, we could have that conversation offline. Okay, thank you. Um, and then um, Di Zhang has asked, um, will coupling different models engender difficulties when setting up solver time steps? Uh, that's a good question. So um, we don't have the ability to do, uh, I guess, local time steps um, where we would use uh, uh, different time steps for different portions of the flow regime. Um, with the exception of the, the Lagrangian based models, they have their own sub-stepping approach. But um, so in, in most cases where you have uh, multiple flow regimes and multiple phase models together, you'll want to set your time step to be um, in keeping with whichever the more restrictive model is. Um, so if you have something that can run very fast and really stable and one that requires a bit more care, you'll need to set your, uh, your time step to be uh, tuned to that uh, more careful model. Um, but you will still be getting benefits of uh, course and mesh and things of that nature. So the uh, total computational cost will still be reduced. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And Di Zhang has also asked, can you share this presentation video later? And I can answer that, um, Zhang. Yes, we, we share all of our webinars on the ATA YouTube channel. Um, it'll probably be up there later this week. 
um, and we will send out um, notifications to everyone where to find it um, after today. And so there's another question from um, Vineet Kumar who's asked, can VOF be coupled to EMF? Um, can VOF be coupled to EMF? Um, in terms of phase models, we, we have uh, VOF and EMP, which uh, do not couple together, but the EMP LSI model um, uh, does account for a, a similar effect. Um, if uh, the other the other acronym that I can think of for EMF would be uh, um, electromagnetic frequencies, in which case, yes, we can bring in our electromagnetism models in and couple them with our VOF uh, multiphase capabilities. Okay, thank you. Um, Hashemi has asked, um, can VOF be directly converted into Lagrangian particles without a film model? Yes, yes, they can. Um, so we have a um, uh, an under-resolved stripping uh, model that allows you to um, essentially where your uh, mesh density gets to the point where you're not properly resolving the, the bubble or the droplet uh, uh, in VOF, you can convert that into a Lagrangian phase that will carry the the mass and the momentum from the Lagrangian phase into or from the VOF phase into Lagrangian. Um, so those two can be. Um, uh, coupled directly, and they can be coupled in reverse as well, where droplets will impinge into um, a VOF phase and automatically be converted into the VOF. Okay, thank you. Um, and questions are still coming, David. So um, another one from Nima is, could you elaborate on incorporating population balance? For instance, in the current wine glass, how bubbles expand and also coalesce between bubbles? So our population balance models are not being used in this particular animation because uh, they're a subset within our EMP model. But if we were to do this using our EMP LSI approach, um, we could use a population balance model. We have a, um, a discrete ordinance approach and we have a, a method of moments approach. Um, either one of them can allow you to model things like breakup and coalescence of bubbles um, based on things like uh, shear profiles um, to help uh, resolve the distribution of the bubble sizes without explicitly resolving the bubble sizes. And so what, what you would be able to learn is what the, uh, the average bubble size in a cell is and how that changes spatially. And you can also get an idea of how wide the, the spread within your distribution is. But you won't necessarily need to resolve bubbles of all those various sizes to capture the bulk effect. Excellent, okay, thank you. Um, and then our last question is from RJK and his question is, I have a fluidized bed application, but the size of the particles is about 200 to 400 microns. However, I want to model surface reactions on these particles. Is this something that's doable? That is a very complex simulation, and um, I, I'll need to uh, defer to some of my colleagues to dig a bit deeper in terms of what we've done with regards to surface reactions on particles. But um, I do know that um, we have uh, we have a number of um, uh, successful approaches to fluidized beds applications, and we also have um, uh, reactions coupled with particles that, that we've done as well. Um, so whether or not that particular use case is, uh, is something we've done or is something that would be a future challenge, I would need to double check on. Okay, thank you, David. And RJK, if you need to discuss that further, you can reach out to either ATA or, or to David. We'll provide connect communication data for, for all of that up in a follow-up email. Um, so that's the end of the questions. We, we thank everyone for attending and, and David, thank you for um, a very complete overview of the, of the whole system. That was great. Um, any other questions before we close the meeting? Okay, so thanks again. This, this, will be, this has been recorded and will be up on YouTube later this week. So you can, you can share it as, as needed and go view it. So thanks very much, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.